Can we find a better way to tackle asthma? It's a tough question that both primary care providers and public health officials struggle to answer. They know its importance for the 25 million Americans that suffer from the disease. Asthma costs the U.S. over $50 billion a year in associated medical expenses. It keeps kids out of school and adults home from work. It makes it difficult for them to live full and active lives. And in 2009, it caused nearly 3,400 deaths. So how do we deal with such a chronic, widespread problem? Primary care providers serve on the front lines of care. They treat asthma by treating individuals struggling with the disease. They see them on a regular appointment schedule. They write prescriptions. And they educate patients and their families on how to prevent attacks. But although many primary care physicians see the bigger picture and wish they could do more, they can't reduce asthma on their own. While treating individual patients does tremendous good, it can't address the environmental factors that affect the disease. Asthma gets triggered by the places people live, work, and play. And primary care doesn't typically work on these problems, but public health does. While public health officials often operate in the background rather than on the front lines of care, they have the means to combat asthma throughout an entire community. By gathering data on local environmental factors like air pollution and pollen levels, they identify possible triggers. They also monitor patients at a population level to see which areas pose the most risk. And they use all this information to develop policies, create educational tools, raise awareness, and form community-based programs to help prevent attacks. All these strategies have the potential to improve asthma treatment. But because public health officials don't see individual patients, all their effort only goes so far. Primary care providers and public health officials could tackle asthma much more effectively by working together. A few communities have discovered that by integrating the work of primary care and public health, they can make bigger strides towards reducing asthma attacks. Tremendous potential exists for aligning policy and investment with the goal of facilitating change. By taking advantage of recent increases in resources and new tools for data collection and aggregation, they have the potential to make these efforts not only successful, but widespread. In Durham, North Carolina, collaboration between local hospitals, the health department, and Medicaid enabled the creation of a health education and outreach program. The program trained community health educators to work in schools and teach kids how to use inhalers and spacers. They reached out to parents, visiting churches and neighborhood gatherings, to talk about treatment. And they facilitated dialogue among all the local primary care providers and asthma specialists to find a common treatment approach. The results were dramatic. Unlike an earlier two-year effort that focused only on doctor's offices, this community-based program saw ER rates drop within weeks. By working with the health department and utilizing their data, they were able to move from 50 different asthma treatments to a single county-wide standard protocol, written in simple English and translated to Spanish. The Durham program was so successful that a similar model is now used across the state of North Carolina. But North Carolina isn't the only place that needed new ways to treat asthma. In eastern Colorado, asthma affects nearly one out of every six people. That's why it became a priority for the High Plains Research Network, a collaboration among community members, researchers, and healthcare providers. They decided to look for new ways to ground their research and programs in the real-life experiences of patients. They engaged the whole community, including primary care providers, public health professionals, community members, and university researchers, to create two asthma toolkits, one for patients and one for providers. The patient toolkit includes a peak flow meter, an action plan, and educational materials. The provider toolkit helps them learn new treatment strategies. It includes visits by two nurses to every practice to provide training on how to evaluate asthma 
how to manage symptoms, and how to communicate with patients. The program had significant results. In fact, 40% of the practices that received coaching reported increases in their prescription of corticosteroid inhalers, marking a real shift in their prescribing patterns. These are just a few examples of how integrating primary care and public health can help treat asthma. But the potential for strategies like this goes beyond one condition. For example, the San Francisco Public Health Department has been able to reduce the amount of time people spend in emergency rooms and hospitals by linking patients to primary care medical homes and offering services at local medical facilities. They've also identified some other serious issues where integration can open new opportunities. In collaboration with primary care and community leaders, they've launched a major campaign to promote screening for hepatitis B among high-risk populations and worked with providers to improve the quality of chronic care management of the disease. And they've invested in Shape Up San Francisco, an initiative to reduce obesity and chronic disease by promoting physical activity and healthy eating across sectors. New York City has also tried some new ways to improve the health of its 8 million residents. They've supported an effort to help physicians adopt electronic health records. The Department of Health has worked with healthcare facilities to create data linkages so they can identify disease trends and outbreaks. They've launched an incentive program that rewards community health centers when their patients show big gains in heart health. And they've made great strides in getting more people screened for colon cancer by partnering with local care providers and communities. These two cities are on opposite sides of the country and they're completely different than Durham or Eastern Colorado. But they all share a common story. Their efforts show how integrating public health and primary care can make a big difference. Integration improves treatment of chronic conditions like heart disease and increases the effectiveness of prevention and health promotion in areas like smoking cessation and vaccination. Both groups have limited access to certain groups of people. But by linking their efforts, providers can use their relationships with individual patients to complement population-level interventions. Integration can also make a real difference for specific populations with specialized needs like uninsured or older people. These groups can be difficult to reach and may require care outside a traditional delivery setting. But integration efforts have been able to link primary care providers to public health resources to make sure these groups have access to the care they need. Integration has a lot of promise, but where do we begin? Despite what you may think, there's a lot of common ground to build on. Primary care providers and public health officials share an interest in improving population health, and history shows that either side can take the initiative and start changing how they do things. No two efforts need to look alike, Lots of opportunities for successful integration exists between the extremes of isolation and merger. That can include more awareness of the other group, cooperation and sharing of resources, collaboration and planning and execution, or building a partnership so deep that the patients can't tell the difference between the groups. Data sharing is an area of considerable opportunity. On average, primary care settings see 11% of the entire population every month. Those visits generate a lot of data that can help public health with conducting surveillance or community assessments. And public health can make their data more useful for primary care. By tailoring assessment data, they can provide valuable insights on the health needs and risks of a specific provider's patients and community. In the past, it was hard for public health workers to get their hands on paper records and information got outdated pretty quickly. But electronic health records have been a major breakthrough in making data sharing possible. In 2011, 55% of office-based physicians use these electronic record systems. Investments by venture capitalists and the public sector will push that number even higher in the years to come. Public health can use them to track chronic illnesses and outbreaks faster than ever before. Surveys show that they also reduce patient care errors and lead to better health outcomes. 
In addition to data efforts, opportunities exist to build a workforce capable of operating as a bridge between primary care and public health activities. Integration doesn't always feel natural to either group. They're used to thinking about certain functions and priorities, and it can be tough to change that mindset, especially when dealing with limited budgets and a busy schedule. But training efforts can help both groups think more collaboratively. Some educational programs are already training medical providers to create a strong research focus on community engagement, and they're working with public health to redesign clinical programs to better meet patient needs at the individual and local levels. Changing how we think about healthcare can seem like an overwhelming task, but communities like Durham have already shown us what's possible. And today's environment offers a great opportunity to begin this transformation. The U.S. healthcare system is facing a serious crisis. 18% of adults have no consistent source of healthcare. That's despite the fact that the U.S. has the highest per capita healthcare spending in the world. The U.S. ranks 32nd among WHO reporting nations in life expectancy of women and 34th for men. And even worse, our infant mortality rate ranks 43rd. That's double the rate of countries like Sweden, the Czech Republic, and Slovenia. We need to do things differently. Luckily, health research is showing us how. More science is emerging on how to improve primary care and prevention. Advances in data collection techniques and health informatics have created opportunities for facilitating utilization and sharing of data. These changes have pushed both government institutions and the private sector to look for innovations in the way they care for people. And they've created openings for more effective policy development to continue these efforts. More and more people realize that things have to change. And the good news is that we already know a great place to start, bringing together the groups with the greatest ability to reach the most people. We've seen what this can do for asthma patients, and we know what a difference it made in places as diverse as New York, San Francisco, Durham, and Eastern Colorado. Now is the pivotal moment to achieve a sustainable improvement in population health, and we need primary care and public health to work together in every community to make it happen. For more information, please read the report available now at iom.edu.